Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today we're looking at the Pentium 2 350. Previously, we checked out the last Pentium 2 running at the 66 MHz FSB. This one is the first Pentium 2 running at the higher 100 MHz FSB. What does the CPU have to offer? How much did it cost back in the day? And what are the prices and availability now on eBay? How does it perform in DOS and Windows benchmarks? And of course, how does it handle retro games? To break it up, we've got some gameplay throughout the video, Age of Empires, The Rise of Rome, Dune 2000, Blood 2, Screamer Rally, Half-Life and Death Cars. In the background, we've got Ultimate Race Pro, I really remember this game very well, playing it with a dial-up modem against other people from all over the world, so I've got really good memories. Enjoy this video, guys! So let's have a quick look at some DOS benchmarks in 3DBench 1.0c. We're getting 531 FPS in Chris's 3DBench 363. In the PC Player benchmark 117. In Doom we're getting 130. In Quake 92. And let's switch up the resolution. PC Player benchmark at 640x480 we're getting 45. In Quake 35. And in Duke Nukem 3D, 60 FPS. So this is the first CPU that's hitting that uh, sweet spot of 60 FPS in Duke Nukem 3D. Looking at the Windows benchmarks in 3D Mark 2000, 2842. In incoming, 71 FPS. In expandable, 38. In GL Quake, 148. In Quake 2, the software render, we're getting 20 FPS. In Quake 3, we're getting 39. In MDK2, we're getting 52 FPS. So the Pentium 2 350 launched in April of 1998, clocked at 350 MHz and likely the first 100 MHz FSB CPU from Intel at least, it's the very first in the Pentium range. It's got a 3.5x multiplier, the 512KB cache, run at half the speed, 175 MHz and it comes in the slot 1 form factor. Now because it runs at the 100 MHz FSB, it's not compatible with the older 440LX chipset so you really should get yourself a decent motherboard with the famous Intel 440BX chipset. Just like all the other Pentium 2s, it supports the memory type range registers. So with tools such as FastVit, you can get a nice performance boost under DOS games. Because the FSB runs at 100 MHz, so does the RAM. I usually just use PC133 memory and run it at the slower 100 MHz. You can happily go into the BIOS and tune all the memory timings to the lowest settings. I ran some benchmarks on the Pentium 2 350. The difference is really minimal. I saw 1 FPS faster performance in incoming, but in most other games the performance was pretty much identical. Construction complete. The Pentium 2 350 is also based on the Deschutes core produced in 250 nanometer, running at 2 volts and a TDP of only 21.5 watts. In terms of pricing, the Pentium 2 350 set you back 621 US dollars according to CPU World. I had a quick look on eBay and you will not have any issues finding this processor. In the US you're looking at around $5 in Germany around 11 in the UK around 16 and in Australia around 19 Australian dollars. So really easy to find. Do check that the coolers included. A lot of these recycling shops like to strip the cooler and sell it separately. If it's a choice between spending a few bucks more and getting a CPU with the cooler, go for that. It's well worth it.
I also checked the power draw. I couldn't really measure any difference between the Pentium 2, 333 and 350. Both draw 55 watts in idle. In Quake 2 at 1600 by 1200, we're getting 64 watts. And in Expandable, that was the only test I saw difference. However, it was in the favor of the more powerful Pentium 2, 350, which consumed 59 watts instead of 60 for the Pentium 2, 333. Let's talk about the games that I've spread throughout the video in Age of Empires in June 2000. No problems, these games run perfectly fine on this machine. Half-Life is slowly getting there. I could definitely tell an upgrade in playability on this CPU, but we're still having a few dips when the action gets a little bit intense. Blood 2 also runs a little bit better, but not as smooth as Half-Life, around 30 FPS most of the time, so that game definitely needs a faster CPU. Death Cars runs quite smooth, and Screamer Rally also feels quite a bit smoother than on the Pentium 333, but really it's best played in VGA, at the 640x480 resolution, the performance is just not there yet. So let's go over this processor. It definitely feels more responsive and has better loading times, but that's all subjective stuff. In the benchmarks, you could clearly see the difference in performance. And most of that performance gain comes from the higher front side bus, not really from the 17 megahertz uh, more that the clock speed has. The CPU is really cheap and easy to find. And if you haven't got a decent slot one motherboard, this might be a reason to go out and get yourself a good Intel chipset motherboard with the famous 440BX chipset. The power draw is also excellent, tying basically with the Pentium 2 333. However, the chip is faster, so performance per watt has actually gone up. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Share the video, hit the like or the dislike button, and leave me a comment down below. What do you think of this CPU? A couple of video suggestions on the screen, and otherwise, I'll see you soon with another video.